We send vast amounts of electronic information every day. As volumes of data have massively increased, so has the importance and privacy of what we send. These days, everything from bank details, medical information, to private conversations and personal information are sent online. It has therefore become very important that data can both be compressed and encrypted before being sent. In this video, we take a look at symmetric versus asymmetric encryption. Encryption is simply the process of encoding a message so that it can be read only by the sender and the intended recipient. Encryption has been around for as long as we've been producing written communications. One of the first forms of encryption was the Caesar cipher. This very simple form of encryption replaces each letter of the alphabet with another some fixed distance along. Here in this example, the alphabet's been shifted by five places. See how we can use this to encrypt a message, something like hello world. In order for someone to decrypt the message, they need to know how many places the alphabet has shifted by. This is known as the key. As long as the receiver knows the key, they can easily decrypt the message. This simple example is very easy to crack, even without the key. The ultimate aim of encryption is to make the original message impossible to crack without the key. Now let's take a look at two of the major types of encryption. The first is symmetric encryption. With symmetric encryption, the same key is used to encrypt the message and to decrypt it. With this method, both parties need to know the key and they need to make sure the key is kept secret. The key can be used many times, or it could be uniquely generated for each transaction in an attempt to make it harder to crack. There is, however, always a danger when using symmetric encryption that the message can be easily cracked by either the interception of the key or by simply duplicating the key production process to acquire a copy of the key. Due to this fact, a lot of systems which need to send very critical information, such as online payment details, use asymmetric encryption, which is a whole lot more secure. We'll take a look at that now. The main difference here is we use two totally different keys. We start with our unencrypted message of before, and we encrypt it with the first key. At the other end, the message is decrypted, but this time by a second key. The point to note here is that the key used to initially encrypt the message is not the same key required in order to decrypt it. It's virtually impossible to work out one key from the other, so owning a copy of either key won't allow you to work out what the other one is. They're generated in such a way that anything encrypted with one of the keys can be decrypted by using the other. Together, these keys form what we call key pairs. For asymmetric encryption to work, we have to pick either one of these keys from the key pair and we make this our public key. The other becomes what is known as the private key. The public key, as its name suggests, is public. You can give it out, publish it online, and quite often they are stored online in the cloud in secure servers known as key servers. The point to note here is that anyone can get access to your public key. The other key, your private key, is absolutely secret. You never send it to anyone. OK, so let's see how this public private key helps us to make a more secure encryption system. So in this example, I have my own key pair, public and private, and the person I want to securely communicate with also has their own key pair, public and private. The first thing we do is exchange a copy of our public keys with each other. Now there's no problem with this as they're designed to be public. We can simply email them to each other. It doesn't matter if someone else intercepts them. So if this person wants to communicate with me privately, they can now use my public key, which I sent them a copy of, to encrypt their message. They send it to me, and then I use my private key, which I've never sent anywhere, to unencrypt it. 
I don't have to share anything else with them at all. I don't need to be worried about someone else intercepting the message, as they can't decrypt it anyway without my private key, which of course I'm keeping totally secure and safe at my end. To take this one step further, there is another huge advantage to this public-private key system. I could potentially encrypt my message with my private key and then send it out. Now, at first you might wonder why I'd ever want to do this. After all, anyone can get access to my public key, so my message could easily be deciphered by anybody. The important thing, however, to note here is the very fact that it can be decrypted with my copy of the public key means that it must originally have been encrypted with my copy of the private key. The message can be seen as authentic. This extra bit of information leads us to the final reality of asymmetric encryption. So what really happens is if I want to send a message, I would use both my private key and your public key. This is often then known as a combined encryption key. This would then get sent and the recipient would use their own private key and my copy of the public key to decrypt it. If we encrypt a message in this way, we know several things. I know that no one else will be able to read the message. You know that no one else can read the message. You can be sure the message is authentic and has come from me and not an imposter. And you can be sure the message hasn't been modified since I sent it, because in order to do so would require both keys. Hopefully you can now see how asymmetric encryption is far more secure than symmetric. The actual keys themselves tend to be very large random numbers things which are very unlikely to be guessed. A typical 128-bit encryption key has this many possible combinations. Trying to guess it via brute force using current technology would still take significantly longer than the age of the universe to crack.